Yes, indeed. The sounds of Camelot with Marching Manifesto, one of my personal favourite tracks. My name is Tolt Biscuit. This is Blue Please here on Wow Radio. That's WCRadio.com. Yes, we actually have a website, which is something that some people don't seem to realise, which is crazy. We run this iTunes thing. We do the RSS. We're all over the place. But yes, we have a website, and we do actually do our shows live. So if you're not listening to this show live... Then, this show was recorded on the 21st of November, 2008, and is currently 22 minutes past 11 in Britain. Yes, we do our shows live. We are WoW Radio for a reason, otherwise we'd just be called WoW Podcasts, which isn't quite as good. Anyway, time to get on with this content. An interesting issue that I would like to share. It highlights something. My show's already been about highlighting things. We highlight grave injustices, such as the fact that that pig is still in the cage in the Southern Barrens. What a disgraceful act. I'm sure Peter would get on you. They would hate you. Peter would hate this game. They really would. I just want to show them World of Warcraft just to see the comedy value that comes out of that. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about GMs. Uh, Not specifically GMs as such, because, you know... I know a few GMs, I've got friends that are GMs, and they're not bad people. The problem I've got is the system in which they seem to be working under. Now, here we go. Here's a story for you. My guild was previously called the Black Guard, and the Black Guard existed on a server. And they transferred servers when they were given a free migration to a brand new server, because said server was overpopulated and a complete mess. So, being the responsible adults that they are, they took the opportunity to move their guild, and they sat there with the name the Black Guard. About a week later, they were told that they would have to change their guild name. They asked why, and the response was this. The term Black Guard is racist. Uh, what? So let me just run this by you again. And this, this is confirmed from the GM of the guild, as well as everyone else in the guild. I have confirmed this. The Black Guard is a racist term. Yes. Racist. Wow. Okay. So I was a little taken aback by that. We're actually called TBG at the moment, which is a terrible guild name. Sorry, guys. Come on. Can you just call it the Puce Guard for the time being until we got this sorted out? So we're called TBG, and we're sitting around, and we keep uh, we keep asking the GMs. You know, we've we tried to appeal it and all that kind of thing, and they said, no, sorry. Uh, you know, some of them said black is a racist term. That's interesting. I might want to go and ask my black friends that. Whether or not they think black is a racist term. Indeed, I might, in fact, want to ask... All of the people involved in writing forms for the government, because the word black is on there for skin colour. I might want to ask anybody, in fact, that every news organisation on the planet that refers to those with dark skin as black, because that is not a racial term, that is merely a descriptive term to describe the colour of someone's skin. Which is fine, as far as I'm aware, because I don't get personally offended by being called white, even though that's technically not true, I'm sort of a shade of pink like everybody else, but never mind, they're also not jet black either, that would be kind of awkward. Anyway, so, that is the issue we have, and I, I, my mind boggled, so I did some further investigation, and I actually sent them another GM request, and I said, so why is it that, you know, black is considered a racist term, blah blah blah, uh, they responded saying, you know, we can't, we can't actually do anything about this, can you contact WoW Concerns EU, uh, WC, uh, whatever it is, don't don't do it at WCRadio.com. We can't solve anything. You know, at World of Warcraft.com. So I'm like, what the, that, okay, fair enough. So you can't solve my problem. You're the customer service. You can't solve my problem. You're referring me to somebody else. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we sent another one in, and we got a response saying, yeah, the black guard is a racist term. Go look it up on Google. So I did. I looked it up on Google. The black guard in Arabic, uh, from a root meaning slave, were the corpse of black African slave soldiers assembled by the Alouette Sultan of Morocco, Moulay Ismail, reigned 1672 to 1727. Yes, the history of a very little known group called the Black Guard. So I thought, right, okay, fair enough. I suppose maybe that's okay. So, but I thought, mm, well, let's do a little bit more research. Let's find out just how many instances of the term Black Guard there are in World of Warcraft. So I had a look. There are four separate NPCs in World of Warcraft called Black Guard. There is a Cult Black Guard, a Defias Black Guard, a Black Guard Sentry, and a Black Guard Swordsmith. Four different mobs in World of Warcraft called Black Guard. There are three different items in World of Warcraft with the words Black Guard in them. Insignia of the Black Guard, Plans Black Guard, and the Sword 
Black Guard, which is actually a level 60 craftable sword called Black Guard. So I thought, okay, fair enough. Well, it's their content. They can do what they want. Maybe it's just about guild names. You know, because they can do the Harris Pilton and that kind of thing, and we're not allowed to do names that are too similar to celebrities, so what about that? Okay, so I'll look for guilds. There are four US guilds called The Black Guard. There are 45 US guilds called Black Guard, as one word. There are 11 EU guilds called Black Guard. There are over 127 characters on the EU side called Black Guard. There are over 100 characters called Black Guard on the US side. And however many others there are on the Chinese, Asian, all those other play things like Oceanic or whatever. So, Blizzard, would you like to again answer the question, why exactly is it that we cannot be called the Black Guard? Are you going to continue to argue that because there was some obscure group of slaves in 1672 referred to as the Black Guard? Bear in mind, of course, this is a translation from the Arabic, which means, of course, that it's probably not even right. Why is it that you are going to hold that as being an offensive term? I can guarantee you that nobody, well, obviously mostly nobody, pretty much everybody, including myself, who did do quite a bit of history, I did. I studied history advanced level and advanced two level. I did that. I did my history. I like history. I have never heard of this group. Ever. Probably because, hey, look, it was in 1672 and things have moved on a little bit since then. <laughs> An awful lot since then. <sighs> what it demonstrates to me is a problem. And not with the GMs. It's not the GMs' fault. I'm not going to put the blame squarely on the GMs. No. It is not the individual customer service guy's fault, and it rarely is. Having worked customer service before, as I imagine many of you have in your time, you will know that most of the time you get an angry customer, it's not because of you personally, and it's not because of what you do. You generally have to follow a procedure, work within a framework, and sometimes the people don't like it. But you, you, they've got to deal with it, because that is what you have to do, because you are employed by said company, and said company says you must do this. That is what you must do. You are bound to these rules, and if you do not follow these rules, you get fired. And you know what? You value your job over the happiness of one particular customer, and that should be the way that it always goes. So, it's not the GM's fault. So whose fault is it? Well, it's the GM structure's fault. It's the structure by which the department is built. Bear in mind, the, of course, the GM department is pretty much glorified call center, one way or the other. They do hire some people that have no clue about WoW at all, and therefore they have a, f a framework which allows them to do certain things. The problem is, and this is going to be demonstrated by an example I'm going to make soon, is that their framework is a mess. It really is. For instance, things I have heard, the GM department does not pursue account sharers. At all. They don't. Because, of course, they require the person to submit it to have evidence. Lots of evidence. And even then, they generally don't do it. They do not pursue account sharers. There is a guy on our server who got to level 80. He was a blatant account sharer. We knew he was an account sharer. Did Was anything done about it, despite the reports? No, of course not. They don't do that. They do not actively pursue acting non-RP on an RP server. The RP server is not... The rules, the actual RP server guidelines, are not enforced. RP names get changed after maybe six months. Depends how long. It is not a priority. Now, here's the big deal that I've got. You may be aware of a person by the name of Athene. Athene is the self-proclaimed best pilot in the world. He creates videos which are hilarious for one reason and one reason alone. They annoy the hell out of people. Because he is an obnoxious, arrogant, haughty, loud... Wait a minute, who does that sound like? Anyway, aside from that, he produces these videos, and apparently he was the first to level 80. But, while doing so, he was banned. And indeed, he was then later unsuspended and put back to level 70. He lost all his levels. Why? Because he used a mob tagging method that was, and this was screenshotted, called legitimate and clever by a GM. They then reversed the decision with no warning. This is a problem. Why is this a problem? This is a problem because it clearly indicates that there is no system of precedent in the GM department. And if a GM wants to email me and tell me otherwise, then by all means, it wouldn't be the first time I've had a GM email. So by all means, if you are a GM, you 
have heard or are listening to this show right now, please, by all means, email in. I would love to hear from you. I will keep your name anonymous if you so wish. It wouldn't be the first time I've had a GM on the show. Now, the issue, of course, is precedent. What is precedent? Well, precedent is a legal term, and it's incredibly confusing because you always slip and say president. It's not the same thing. Precedent. It is a term whereby a court makes a decision, and that decision then becomes binding on all courts lower than that court. So it's like if the Supreme Court makes a judgment in a case, then that judgment is binding on all the courts below it. And they are the ones who can overturn the precedent. What it allows is for the situations that the law does not account for to be effectively judicially legislated on. Now, you know, that's a term, of course, that... If there's any judiciary listening to the show, which again is highly unlikely, they're going to be up in arms about that because there is no judicial legislation. Arr, arr, arr. You know, I did my law degree, and that's effectively what it is. But it's good because it allows the judiciary to come up with all of these situations that haven't been previously foreseen in the law and lay down the law on those particular issues and give guidelines which are binding to the lower courts in future. So it makes the system a heck of a lot more efficient and, more importantly, a heck of a lot more consistent. You don't get all of these cases which turn out differently just for the sake of the judges not having a good day. Now, this system is very effective because what it allows you to do, and this works in everything, customer service included, is to come upon a situation you have not previously encountered, make a ruling on it, and then only somebody higher up than you can overrule that. And they have to do so with sufficient notice. So we have a situation whereby a GM has said that the mob tagging method is legitimate. It is okay. Then we have another GM that comes along and said, no, it isn't okay, you're bad. That is a bad thing. That shows a lack of communication, and it would not be the first time. There are loads of examples, and feel free to email them in. Email in your examples of GM inconsistency to themurlockatgmail.com. That is themurlockatgmail.com. And why is that? It's because the GMs are effectively working under a guideline, set of guidelines and frameworks, but there is no precedent. It's not there. There is no communication between the GMs. The structure isn't there. They're acting as independent operatives, and effectively their word is law, based on, of course, the guidelines. So if the situations we're encountering aren't in the guidelines, like, say, the Athene mob tagging method, obviously not in the guidelines, because it's not done very often. They probably didn't even bother to put it in there. When another GM comes along and says, hey, we don't like this, hey, reverse the decision, bang, Uh straight away. Not a good thing to do. Because you might say, well, Athene's a bastard. I don't like Athene. I don't like Athene either. I don't like him either. Who does? You know, he's the guy you love to hate. He's like Chris Moyles. Wow. No, can't stand that awful, rotund, obese, sweaty little man. But people listen to him because they love to hate him. You know, they wouldn't be the first. You know, Howard Stern is pretty similar. There's all, all sorts of different DJs like that. Presenters, personalities. It doesn't matter if you hate him or not. Because if it had happened to you... You would be crying too. Indeed. But it's the GM's party and they can legislate if they wish to. It shows inconsistency and that is very dangerous in customer service. Incredibly dangerous because it does affect people's play. This is the kind of thing that needs to be stomped on fast. It's the kind of thing that a framework needs to be set up so that GMs know what other GMs have done in a situation like that. There needs to be a big book and if there isn't a big book... There needs to be one. If there is a big book, then please tell me why your GMs are not reading it. There needs to be a clear structure put in place that can be modified and is flexible and can be added to as different situations occur and arise that you may not previously have foreseen in your set of guidelines and rules and regulations. This is the kind of thing that needs to be done. Because if it doesn't, it's going to come around and bite somebody in the arse. In fact, it already has. It's going to bite many more people in the arse, and they're not going to be people that we would actually like to see bitten in the arse. They're going to be our guildmates. They're going to be our friends. They're going to be our colleagues. They're going to be our realm mates. And they're going to be us. And that would be pretty lousy, I must say. So yes, if you are a GM and you wish to comment on this, feel free. I will keep your name anonymous. If you are not a GM and you wish to comment on it, then you can do that too. I'll try and read your emails out towards the end of the show before the shout-outs. If you want to email in for the illusion of choice... Then you may do that. Email the at gmail.com, pick me a topic, and I shall go to town, as it were. I think it's about time for a music break. I'm going to go down and get a drink, and I will be right back with The Illusion of Choice. I'm going to play something by Sonata Art, because I'm a big fan of it, and it's always, it's, it's going to be appropriate for the next X number of weeks while Wrath's out. Oh, Sonata Arctica, it's a reference to snow! <laughs> it's awesome. Never mind. I'm going to play it. It's great. I love it. 
It's called My Land. And I'll be right back after this with the illusion of choice. You'll listen to Blue Please here on Wild Radio with myself, Total Biscuits. Enjoy. 